repost meme threatening black poll workers. He is staying on brand, folks. Yep, that's him. Donald Trump is known for his online threats against judges, jurors, Democrats, lawmakers, veterans, soldiers, and more. But on Monday, he added black poll workers to the list. Among the things Trump reposted on his personal, I mean, social media site, Truth Social, was a meme reading, start arresting the poll workers and watch how fast they tell you who told them to cheat with a photo of two black people sitting at a table wearing masks, reading Biden-Harris 2020. Now, you might you might want to think it's a coincidence. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. It's one that lives in his mind from a book called How to Be Racist. It is what it is. Okay, it is what it is. Let's show you more, shall we? Because uh, he didn't stop there. Reverse image search shows it has been posted by Dan Bongino and an anti-Biden Facebook group. There are allegations that the so-called poll workers are from Philadelphia and another claiming they were photographed in Detroit. The Philly was then reposted by far right actor James Woods, who posted the photo alleging impropriety on November 5th, 2020. Sarah K. Burris of Raw Story with the details here. Uh, There goes the theory about it might have been a coincidence, right? to look for this in likely places. Questions of legitimacy of the photo in the meme. Raw story was unable to find the original source of the photo before the person named Will Holiday alleged it was a group of poll workers in Philly. Searching for Holiday's account shows that it was suspended and the post is no longer available online. Somehow 45 found it. The account appears to be a source of several blog posts about conservative stories such as What about a Kansas teacher, North Carolina preacher, and blog post about the photo of the poll workers? Photo is never confirmed by any mainstream news sites. And the same account at will underscore holiday one doesn't appear on other social media sites, including Truth Social. Now, after the 2020 election, Trump supporters, well, they targeted two Georgia poll workers. Remember, Ruby Friedman? Her daughter, Shay Moss, accusing them of being on drugs, passing a thumb drive. They have since sued Rudy Giuliani and won. They might never see the money from it, however. They also testified before Congress about what it was like being targeted by MAGA and the entire MAGA world, having their homes attacked and Trump supporters attempting vigilante justice by performing a citizen's arrest, folks. Here's a reminder of what Shay Moss went through. Watch. Those horrible things that they include threats? Yes, a, a lot of threats, um, wishing death upon me, um, telling me that you know I'm, I'll be in jail with my mother and saying things like, be glad it's 2020 and not 1920. That's, yeah. were, were a lot of these threats and, and vile comments racist in nature? A lot of them were racist. A lot of them were just hateful. Um, Yes, sir. You hear that? There can be no mistake about what the intended threat was, is. That included one's mother. And oh, by the way, Ruby Friedman, she told her own story as well. Listen. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security, all because a group of people starting with number 45 and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay. 18,000 voters uh, having to do with uh, Ruby Friedman, That's, uh, she's a vote scammer, a professional vote scammer and hustler. Their places of work, their homes should have been searched. For evidence of ballots, for evidence of USB ports, for evidence of voter fraud. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American, not to target one, but he targeted me, Lady Ruby. 
a small business owner, a mother, a proud American citizen who stand up to help Fulton County run an election in the middle of the pandemic. All the things that Ruby Freeman listed there make her a hero, someone to be proud of. So I'm gonna state what is obvious to Ruby and her daughter Shay. They were targeted because they don't matter. Because they're black women in Georgia. And they were symbols of something that some people didn't want to see. Quality, service, integrity. Nope. That's not in the Donald Trump playbook. And Mayor, I I believe they better get something out of Rudy Giuliani. This is all that's left is to decide the money. Maybe I missed it, but that's all they're deciding. The money, because he was forced to admit it. He had no evidence to the contrary that he made this all up and targeted these women and slandered their good names. All that's left is the money. I hope they get it. What say you about all of this? So what's very rich about all of this, um, you know, we'll get to the, the current situation, but the Ruby Freeman situation is I, I never paid attention to the part where you have a hustler, a known scammer who's been sued so many times for the past three or four decades talking about Donald Trump, calling these people who are real public servants scammers, hustlers with racial intent on them. She's not a known scammer. She's not a known hustler. She's not a vote hustler. That's what that's what you were actually on the phone trying to do. You literally were trying to vote hustle, Mr. Trump. I think the, the disgusting part of this is we know exactly, he know exactly what he's doing with this new uh, with this new picture of these two black people. The internet, the racist white conservative internet will go find these people and harass these people. And notice that they had to be from Detroit or Philly, two predominantly black suburban places and, and spaces where white people lost, Trump lost big, bigly. Uh, in this past election. So I think what happened, what we're seeing is Donald Trump trying to look for ways to make sure that his people remember that he didn't lose the election. It was people that were still in it. And oh, by the way, you should go get them because Donald Trump does not care about life, the cost of life, or what, what effects his lives have on other people. We see that already he's becoming, uh, he's already forgetting who uh, his his attorneys were Powell, for instance. He don't even know her. She was not his attorney now, even though she pled guilty to being his attorney and also lying in his scam, his vote scam in Georgia. I think what's, what's really scary, though, is people don't get their lives back. You can't be made whole once the president on national TV or in this in this manner call you a scammer. There will always be a segment of the population that believes what Donald Trump has said about uh, Rudy Freeman and these people as well, whenever their names are released. And for that, I mean, these people should be leveled up. They should have his security because we know how his people react to the harm, uh, especially at black people when Donald Trump said go. Wow. Yeah, Sidney Powell, you mentioned. Perhaps she'll unleash the Kraken when she testifies against 45. Okay, he'll remember her then, or at least the jury will. I agree with you, there's no way, there's no amount of money that can give Lady Freeman her name back, Shea Moss, her sense of security back. And I just wish that there would come a time where more people would move from the darkness to light. And I don't know, Mayor, I'll, I'll end it with this and let you comment and have the last word. I wonder if what we're seeing with the Republicans in Congress who can't pick a leader, they just can't. And you can blame Democrats all you want, but aren't you supposed to pick your leader? You should have the numbers, but you don't because none of you has this respectful relationship with the other. Okay, And that's what happens when you rally around lies and prop them up when you know better and you know privately what you're saying. But I wonder if we're seeing just a little bit, a peak of daylight, if you will, where some, I hate the word moderate too. You're not moderate if you went along with the big lie. You are uh, something else that's anti-democracy. But do you think we're seeing a hint? People who said, no, we're not gonna let Jim Jordan be Speaker of the House, Republicans who said, no, we're not gonna do it. Am I being naive, Mayor? 
I don't know if it's naivety or it may be more closely linked to the fact that what we're seeing is we do see this rebellious body that says Jim Jordan is not the one. However, it doesn't ring true. It rings very hollow since no one has called out Jim Jordan for sharing, sharing uh, private information from Congress with Trump when he was in the White House. What we do know, though, is these people that are speaking out against Jim Jordan are in districts that Biden won or that weren't for Democrats or very, very rarely uh, did they win their districts in 2022. And they know it's election season and voters will not stand for the things that Jim Jordan would do as speaker. So I think right now what we do, what we don't see is something that's altruistic. We see something people looking out to save themselves. And we should acknowledge that because it's true that Trump put a, a put flame on the fire, but we saw these people come in. Patrick McHenry, who's the intern, came in with that 2010, I mean that 20, that early Tea Party mess that we act like it was normal for these Tea Party Republicans to come in, but it led us to where we are. So Newt Gingrich, while he criticized Trump, has a role in this 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 dysfunction in That's one of hard. the major. The, one of the major parties in this country. And, and as a Democrat, I don't find joy in the Republican Party being this dysfunctional because we are a democracy that depends on these two parties to be normal, to present ideas, especially if you're in the minority like us. We need both parties functioning properly, chasing our votes and working for us, because if not, then one party can easily forget us. And when the Republicans are playing this fragile game with our fragile democracy, we don't win. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And infighting is one thing, okay? Ask a progressive in the Democratic Party. It's a constant fight, but there's integrity, there is truth, there is a reckoning, there is a level, just a level of respect, Mayor, that has one side acknowledging, if not defeat, that we don't have the numbers and we want and respect our country. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. We're going to try something here. We're gonna hold our nose even. That's not what I see with the Republican side, I'm sorry. I hate to put it in terms of good versus evil, but there's an evil within that's taken over that party. And it's gonna take, can you believe that? We have to look for an example in Dick Cheney's daughter. It's gonna take self-sacrifice, falling on your sword and knowing that you'll no longer be part of this club. But at least you'll be able, I guess, look yourself in the mirror. We'll see.